Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This time I'm going to show you a number of the cracks I've done that I'm a little more proud of than the, um, the, the like the average, the normal one, where I've really taken the time to go the extra mile to make the version really, really special. Uh, the first one we're going into uh, is uh, an adventure game called Masquerade. So, uh, as, as a, like, a, like a bit of a background here, um, on the C64, if you make uh, a save with replace, uh, that's one of the easy functions. If you want to replace a file, you want to have like a, a safe replacement of an existing file, there is a save and replace. Uh, so you have the alpha sign colon and then you give the file name that way the um, the OS of the disk drive saves the new file and then deletes the old one um, and uh, and then marks the current one as sort of the active one that's sort of the process but the issue here is that if you have let's say five blocks available on the disk and you're saving with replace on a file that is like seven blocks, it will not fit. So you will have the new file saved uh, with a splat. So it's incomplete. The, the, uh, the save couldn't conclude. And then it deletes the old one. So you sit there by, and you're not having the, two, the, the new file and the old file is also deleted. So you are sort of in the limbo situation where you don't have a valid file anymore. And to um, and, and this is sort of still debated, but uh, according to Inside Commodore DOS, this is more like a hoax. But uh, my, my own personal experience is that there is actually really an issue here. So if you start saving again, uh, the uh, not everything is updated and there are pointers pointing wrong. Uh, so if you start writing now uh, without replace or, or anything, just normal saving, you risk having the system start overwriting existing files. I cannot say for sure that this is the case with Masquerade, but, but Masquerade uh, ha is a game with a, a subset of save slots. I think they're all seven blocks, uh, but, but the program and let's say there are five save slots. I should be able to watch that. But um, how many save slots are there? Yeah, well, <laughs> I still don't know. Uh, so, but but the number of save save slots available times the seven blocks that you have per save. Uh, there are not enough blocks for that and and it still would like you to save on the original disk which is also not recommended whatsoever so i have been chasing a real original of this game where all the files are complete and i cannot find it right so um so the adventure game has a number of, of places you can visit and all the places they have a, a file with it, a graphical file, like a bitmap file of it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's throw in Vice here already. So this is the Fairlight version. Um, and um, so there are basically three files that are destroyed or missing um, and uh, in my version, they are all complete, and we will get to the point of of, uh, of this uh, in a second. But let's start this. So, uh, oh, sorry. So I made a tool for displaying the files, um, and we can go into warp mode. So picture forty three. This is how it should look. Uh, there is a crack in the ceiling, you can enter there and you do something with this uh, block thing and then you can climb up and, and escape the uh, this dungeon you're in here, basically an asylum or something. I, I don't really remember the game, but, uh, but this is sort of how the picture should look and we will get back to this. Picture 24, uh, this is how it should look. There is, I think it's an elevator on the left and then there is sort of an entry uh, from uh, from yeah the far end of the room. 
And then you have this one, picture 69 of a gorilla. Uh, and please mind that the, uh, the, the cage here is closed. Uh, and I should do, there is no, I didn't, I didn't produce any sort of restart the program from the beginning. That should be the case, but uh, normally you wouldn't need that. So, uh, let's have a look at abandonware. So this is one, uh, from, well, I picked up basically all the versions there were on the market to ensure I would have something that had the files in them. And uh, so here you would see that that file is totally trashed, right? It's it's totally trashed. Next one, also totally trashed. That one also totally trashed. So 43, 24 and 69, all totally trashed. And then when we get to picture zero, uh, 01, um, and then I'm just reading them, incrementing them over time. So this is the, the three first are exceptions because these are the sort of the files I, I'm particularly keen to look at. So, all right. And then, yeah, just just to show you the, how the uh, the program works. OK, let's let's do. OK, we restart and we take another disk uh, the a so this one is called aes version one it has some sort of index that it's i don't know if that's a c or c or something 98a142 so picture 43 here you see that there is some sort of hatch in the roof and there is, uh, but there is no, this block that should be there isn't there, uh, which is super annoying. And the, the reason this is, is that this is actually not the, like the valid picture. They have taken another picture and they've inserted it here so that the game sort of wouldn't be broken, but the, the, the picture doesn't show what it should show. And this one, I believe, is correct, right? With the elevator and the uh, and the entry in the far end. And this one, here you see that the gorilla is there, but the cage is open. So again, they have taken the cage's open picture and replaced with the broken one or the missing one, whichever that is. Um, and in the game, of course, this is really confusing. If the purpose of your mission on the screen is to open the cage and you enter a screen where the cage is already open, it's not very apparent that the purpose of this is to open it because to you it already looks open. Um, we should have a look at the... Whoa, uh, whoa, Rome's. I have no idea. Uh, again, they were picked up from the from the internet a long time ago, so I don't really remember the details. Okay, here you see that they have the same copy of the same file. So it's it's the hatch. It's not the crack. This one is correct. But here they they actually have this this this. Uh, the picture where the cage is closed. So the 69 is correct in this version. Uh, okay, so I took all the versions I could find and documented this in an Excel file where um, uh, compared the files in each of them and, and uh, what looks like the proper one. And if they weren't the proper one, uh, then I I could find from one version or another the proper one. But the issue was still this picture 43. So let's do... Uh, let's, let's get back to the first one. So this one. Um, the original one, uh, let's see if we can see that in, in another, uh, okay, let's, let's look at the one in the abandoned where one, uh, because so here you see in the beginning that there is actually like a crack in the roof here. 
So the beginning of this file is correct. Uh, it's just that somewhere in the middle it trashes out. So um, getting back to, to how disks are structured on the C64, you have a directory that points to where the file is, and then the first two bytes in a block points to the next file, uh, the next sector in a chain. So it, it adds 254 bytes in every sector. So out of the 256, the first two are links to the next one. And this is a five block file. And that's not really visible here, but the first two blocks are actually correct. The middle block is corrupt and the last two blocks are also correct. Uh, this didn't really, this was something that took right, really long time to actually find out. But uh, so I identified two blocks that didn't have any connection to anything else. And then and, and I could really, and I can easily tell that the third block in the chain was totally corrupt because that was containing something totally different. So what I did was I took those two blocks uh, and then I try to rebuild the stuff in the middle. And on the internet, there is a file or, or a video, a playthrough of the game uh, from, I, I believe it's Apple II. So I knew how the picture should actually look, uh, which made it a lot easier. So I did a depacker and I depacked the picture and uh, sort of made a picture that was correct in the upper part, correct in the lower part, and then I patched in ports of some other picture so that it would look reasonable in the middle. Then I sent it to VDK and, and I, um, and it was in one of the, I think it's art studio format, which is something which is convenient for me to work with. And then, uh, and then he drew the box. So the box, from my perspective, is totally lost from all versions on the C64. I even bought two versions online and they had the same corrupted uh, file here as well. So I have not been able to find a real original. So we recreated the original. So, so VDK painted uh, an instance that looked exactly like the Apple II version based on sort of the material I sent in. And then I created a packer. So the, 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 the pictures are sort of run length encoded. So I sort of derived uh, the structure of the, of the packed data. And then I was able to pack VDK's picture into something that looked like the, uh, the real original. So let's... Uh, Let's get back to our, our original here, or our version. So again, this crack was sort of okay, but somewhere here it started corrupt. That's where I patched in something else. And I think the lower part was also correct. Um, and then VDK basically drew this, I don't know if it's a wooden block or whatever this is in the middle. Um, yeah, so that is working, walking the extra mile to ensure that you produce a working version. Um, yeah, a little tricky. I do still have the packer, so in case anybody would like to redraw parts of this game, I can provide the packer. It's not publicly published yet because there was sort of an issue with it that I needed to manually patch a few bytes to ensure that it, it really worked because um, yeah I yeah whatever the reason was but but again masquerade really uh, really interesting uh, game and I I would encourage you to play and there is only one version available that is complete and consistent and understandable. And that is the Fairlight version. Just to show you this as well. So uh, this is the Excel file. Um, these are the files in decimal and in hexadecimal. And this is my little description of what was in each of the pictures. This is also, I think it's a tick box telling if it's, uh, if the 
picture is used in the actual game or not. And it seems like there are uh, pictures not used. Uh, I, I I barely remember this, so it's uh, so bear me with me if not the of if all the details are not really clear, clear to me. But here you see here the basement with the door left closed. So in Abandoned Wares version, it's broken. In the AES V1, it works. If in the AES version 2, it's broken. In the GMEC, it's broken, rather mildly so. And in the SSS version, it's broken. So here, I there, there is seemingly the version uh, AES version 1, where it's 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 usable and and that one i can extract from that version rather than uh, the bork the original i had and here cracking the roof that's the big issue one but let's take the 69 so here incomplete here they cheated and they've taken a copy of file 70 uh, this is the the monkey cage here it's broken, here it's also a copy of uh, version 70, and in the SSS version it's it's broken. And the uh, the one where uh, which we recreated, it's incomplete, here was a copy, here it's incomplete, uh, and here it's uh, broken. And in my version it was also broken. The, um, so um, th that's sort of where I wouldn't have any work in one. And, and I made a note that, uh, well, I, I don't have that, but I need to have it if I want to produce a working version. Yeah, uh, again, a lot of work to go through just to identify uh, all the data that we needed to, to, uh, to have all the, the relevant data for uh, a complete game. But um, yeah. That was it. Okay, so the next uh, game we will have a look at is Bolo. Um, it's a game which, uh, well, to be honest, it's not really a good game. But uh, but when you crack, it's about the quality of the crack. You cannot do anything about the game itself. Uh, if the game is crap, all you can do is treat it with your sort of best ability to ensure that the version is good, even if the game is crap. Sometimes this is sort of mistaken. So if the game is shit, you always think that the cracker did a crappy job uh, out of the game, but that's, that's really not fair because uh, you need to look at the effort that the cracker put into the game to make it the best possible version. So um, that said, let's have a look here at Bolo. Um, yes, no, we need to have input pointing in the, rec in the correct uh, window. So here it is. So th this one has a note uh, where I'm <laughs> vote begging. Uh, and this is IFFL. So there is a very, very small file in the beginning that contains the uh the intro of course the trainer uh, and also the scanner for iffl so iffl is taking this 179 block file which is the iffl file that one is basically not one file it's multiple files it's just joined together so there is it's physically one file but logically there are segments inside of it that contains crunched version of of different files so uh, so it, it's made very, very small. And um, so let's see how it looks when you run it. So here the scanner starts. So it's sending something to the disk drive and then the disk drive starts working through the 179 block file to build a table inside drive memory. So it knows the track sector and offset of all the segments inside the file so uh and and i can hear that the disk drive is now silent so it's uh, it has done all the scanning it should do and uh, unlimited time unlimited lives for player one player two so here is what i wanted to show you so in the <laughs> In the IFFL loader, I've also inserted a music routine. So I seemingly had enough um, <laughs> enough uh, memory to fit in uh, also a loader routine here, uh, a, a music routine inside the loader here. This is 
David Simmons uh, graphics. And uh, David, I'm sorry, but this is not good. Oh, it wasn't good then, and it's and it sure is that didn't stand the test of time. But uh, I would say the uh, the loader routine has been standing the test of time here, playing music while loading. So it's loading, fast loading, and also decrunching at the same time. Okay, so David Simmons, uh, also known as Jazz Cat. Yeah, so here you see it's it's clearly playing stuff and it's loading the next time. So it's not so that this is all stored in memory. It's loading from this IFFL file. And it's also quite clear that it contains multiple segments. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you in, in this one. So Bolo, the Fairlight version, by far the best one. Okay, I wanted to show you another one, and uh, this has uh, similarities with the previous one. Um, let's see here. Uh, this one is Dalek Attack. Uh, it's also... Uh, so, th there is sort of a conflict here between the drive towards having all the data in as few files as possible and then compare it with the drive to be able to kind of play the game as soon as possible. Um, I've always wanted the opportunity to have kind of remove uh, documentations from the main file, remove blower big animations intro like and have that as a separate file so you can run them because normally you would like to one run them once and be impressed by them once but if you uh, play the game again they are just typically annoying you i know that there you will see an, an exception of this where it's sort of um, yeah, in alternate reality, you really want to see the intro because it's part of the backstory to where you're going. It's not just fancy graphics, it's adding to the backstory. But uh, uh, so we can we can run the intro and uh, I just picked this up from CSDB. I didn't have um, I, that was more convenient than finding where I had it uh, in my own collection. Uh, there was an issue with the version that was online, uh, it loaded, so the intro, when you run the intro, it loads Dalek Attack, the, the main file, but uh, the name of the file it intended to load was not the file given to the actual file. So do check if you're, if you're picking this up from CSDB, uh, you probably would like to ensure that you, you download the fixed version. There is still an issue with it, but uh, yeah, let's you will see that it's quite obvious when we get to that point. So, here I have the opportunity of watching the intro, it's first there, and um, and when you press uh, the fire button, it loads, and there you see the intro. So, this is in the second file. If you would like to play the game once more, then you might want to load the main file, the uh, rather and just skip the intro. That would save you loading time, which means that you can faster get into the game's action. And um, yes. So here, uh, the game was also in an IFFL, and here in the background, it's scanning, building that table in the disk drive RAM. And uh, yeah, it seems I've messed up the upper and lower case here. Uh, starting level, unlimited lives. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh yeah, I turned you off joystick here you see that i have that feature again by playing music while i'm loading and depacking so uh, and uh in in bolo i was playing the uh, a separate tune that i contributed with but here i was playing the game's 
own tune, which is sort of a, an improved step. First of all, I don't take the extra space by providing my own music, and it's also more consistent with the user experience of playing the game, playing its own music, the game's own music. Right, and uh, yeah, well, of course, this is not the ambition here is not to play the actual game, so uh, just like you to show. Uh, to see the director here again and here you see the 205 block that's who levels that's the big file with all the data in it so uh, yeah Dalek attack it's a bit unfortunate this uh, upper lowercase thing with the with the trainer everything else is perfect and that's just one byte where you control if it's upper or lower and seemingly i didn't output i didn't select that so it was what it was before um i don't know how to toggle that uh, using vice um yeah well whatever um uh, that was a uh, dalek attack a really cool version um i must say over to the next one Okay, so um, I'm, I'm now showing you something called Birds Plus. Um, let's see where we have the camera. That's sort of here. Okay. This is a game that had, I don't know, four or five levels or something. And uh, if you look at most of the other versions, they had like a main file and then they had all the levels listed on the, on the files. Uh, sorry, on the directory. Um, and uh, Chromans did a really good thing. They had an IFFL, so um, all the levers were in one file, but uh, there was an opportunity for walking the extra mile because the, uh, the top part of memory wasn't used in this game. So what I did was an IFFL, but I didn't do an IFFL from disk. I did an IFFL from memory. So the, the game is in the lower part of the memory, and then the uh, the levels are on the top part of the memory. And I'm loading them from memory. So loading and decrunching from that uh, big sequence of data uh, that is there. So I was able to squeeze everything into one file. And, uh, and a number of people thought that I sort of missed a number of level files because it was uh, it was sort of too little to be <laughs> to be relevant. But uh, this is uh, an in-game IFFL file. Again, walking the extra mile to ensure that I was able to produce that best version available. Um, seems like I used AB Crunch. C for level skip, uh, yes, why not enable that? Single density. So there was a, a company called Double Density and, and seemingly this, this Polish uh, team of coders called themselves Single Density. Very interesting name. Fire to start. Yeah, so it's game over. Okay, well, it won't show you anything. Um, yeah, there was, of course, the opportunity to play which one is the Commodore key? I don't know. Uh, which one is the Commodore key? It's, oh yeah, yeah, it's the tab. So here it loads all the levels. And here we concluded the game by passing all the, was it three or four levels? Four or five potentially? So this is completing the game by pressing Commodore or tab seemingly if you run Vice on Windows. From the IFFL in-game IFFL file that was in the game. So that's one way where you can make your version stand out really cool. Uh, I have also done a Rio-based uh, IFFL. So uh, alternate reality, uh, the city, uh, that, was, that was done and it worked, but based on, on standard 1541, but we've also put out a special version that takes the entire IFFL file, ships that up to a RAM expansion unit if one of those is, is enabled, otherwise the game won't work. So it, it requires you to have the RAM expansion unit and then ships it up to the RAM expansion unit. And then when you start playing, it, it depacks, it loads and depacks directly from the RAM expansion unit. It doesn't use like any buffer or anything. It uses the um, 
it's using a, a get byte. So um, the, it's, it's of course loading uh, way faster than from a disk drive, but it's still uh, not as fast as, is, as it possibly could be. But, uh, but again, that is using IFFL, a RAM expansion based um, IFFL, which is also one way where you can make the game more playable. Um, yeah, but, but again, it, it doesn't really beat in-game RAM based IFFL because then then loading and depacking is really really fast as you saw here. So so this was Birds Plus. Over to the next one. Okay, here we will talk about my Magnum Opus, the the very best thing I've done, and uh, and I spent uh, a better part of my entire adult life doing this so uh, and i've done a few hundred cracks so it better be good if i call it the uh, magnum opus so this is alternate reality the dungeon so i'm here showing you the 1581 version of it um the 1541 comes in three discs um you would have one Disc one, which predominantly is the boot, and then you flip over to side two, and most of the gameplay is on that side. It's just that when you enter certain rooms, I wasn't able to fit that onto the second page, so it needs to go over to the first disc side again, and you can flip back and forth. So uh, uh, there, there, there is never any sort of risk that you lose. Um, you lose track of where you are and, and you would fail if you have the wrong disk side in or anything. The loader is, is very agnostic, so if it doesn't find the file, it just asks you to put in the proper disk side again. And and it doesn't I don't have any track of which is on which disk side. I just know if you try to load and if it's not on that side, you're assumed to swap the disk and, and look at that one. The, the disk uh, routine works on 1541, 71, 81, and also SD2 IEC. So um, the reason I have it on the 1581 is because then you would never need to do any, any disk flipping. Um, this game, we also did um, <laughs> a, a docs. First of all, there is a specific docs disk, so you can read all the documentation uh in a number of files on the c64 um i would say it's uh, there is a letter which is something that came with the game and then there is also a reference card which is also something that came in the in the um, in the game itself there there are three files um that are guidebooks and uh, and then there is also a handbook uh, uh, which is also something published separately the guidebook is something collected by some guy on online a swedish guy i remember um so that that is compiled on one disk and uh why so many files because our note uh note maker doesn't support like an infinite uh, amount of of data and uh, we all are it's also a note maker it's not uh, like a um a magazine where a magazine player where you could have multiple files on the disk and and it would play uh, one of those so this is the crack. It took me 11 months to conclude all of this. I basically tore it all to pieces and started rebuilding it again. Uh, I didn't reassemble that much, but, uh, but I basically broke it to pieces and, and ensure I could put it back together again. It might not have been the most efficient way of doing it, but uh, yeah, at least it's 100% it's proper. And, and to be honest, one of the key parts that took a really long time was the uh, the loading and saving, the character loading and saving, because that needs to be basically reconstructed. It was, uh, it was using its own custom format disk, so you needed to format the disk and then store a number of files on it. Now it's fully file based, so that conversion alone took uh, a number of weeks to do. Uh, is it because I'm a bad coder or if I, is it because I'm slow or or why did it take that long? Yeah, yeah, could be any of those reasons, of course, and uh, or it could be that the task is fairly complex. So it just took so long uh, because there was no documentation available to me. It was just reverse engineering. 
So the version is that. I will show you the version briefly as well, because the, um, the, the version, we have a specific video on this. Actually, video number one, there is a, a talk between me and Jason Compton, who was the guy that uh, sort of instigated us to do this. Uh, and he was also a key contributor to beta testing and all of that, because he was really keen to have a good version on the C64. Uh, but we also released a PDF. It's a 50 page PDF documentation. Um, it has pictures of basically all the relevant location and description what you can do there. And uh, it describes the all the tricks from the handbooks and the guidebooks that we have been able to find. So uh, TNG did an excellent job compiling all of that into one uh, one major source one book that will probably have costed you um, tens of dollars uh, if you would buy it back then but uh, that was provided by us and i should also show you this we also provided a special uh, t-shirt. So if you would like to play your favorite game, Alternate Reality, the, dun uh, yeah, the Dungeon, you should, of course, do it wearing your special t-shirt. So this is the special t-shirt. And I believe it says that we released it on uh, the 19th of February, 2021. Uh, so yeah, so this... This is that, and of course you can have it in. Uh, yeah, I should be, but you should have you. You can buy mugs and and uh, coasters and what have you not using this design. Uh, should all be there in Redbubble.com. So check out the Redbubble.com if you're interested in that T-shirt. But uh, let's go back to this, and uh, uh, yeah, so let's play. And, and making things look easy uh, might be the hardest thing you can do. And again, this looks just like the original, but a lot of it is reconstructed. It's not original code that is running. It's my code that is, uh, is doing the same thing, but doing it towards files rather than raw load towards the disk and, and also uh, loading and saving of characters. Uh, we spent a massive amount of time building the in-game keys and trying to mitigate all the side effects of, of certain in-game things. Uh, so we would want... So in, in the game, you can press W to win fight. It doesn't happen immediately. It's just that when it's your turn, it recognizes that you have... Um, rendered the uh, the energy of the opponent to zero. So that's what happening when you win fights. Uh, there is, uh, when you start the game, there you are in a lit up area, but um, as soon as you go in somewhere, you need to turn on the light. So this X turns on the light perpetually for you. And, uh, and teleport menu, that gives you a menu of a number of locations where you can go somewhere else inside the game. Rather than running there, you can enter this menu and teleport yourself to that particular destination. Uh, Z for inventory menu, uh, where you can add a number of items. We have created specific Fairlight items. <laughs> Super strong shields, super strong weapons, and, and all of that. Uh, we can have a quick look at that. I just need to note down because this is uh, sometime since I played X, T, Z. So, okay, T and Z would be the two important ones. For a second, I was worried that it wouldn't load, but uh, I think it loads using the st standard kernel loader up until here. So that's when it's installing the the fast loader and starts using the fast loader as well. So, and again, this is uh, the 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 fast loader has a version for fifteen forty one and fifteen eighty one. So this one is is triggering the fifteen eighty one. So N for creating a new character, E to resume an existing character, and P to prepare a save disk. And uh, yeah, I should remember all of this, but I don't prepare the save disk. Let's do E 
insert character disk and normally that needs to be a special disk but uh, here you can easily load and save using the uh, using the standard disk. Uh, it has no characters on it. Oh yeah. Mm, prepare a save disk. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah. So there was uh, th this issue of potentially having characters. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we will uh, spacebar to continue. Okay. So we make a new character. Uh, we call him uh, That was unexpected, wasn't it? Uh, I'd say he's male last time I checked. And this is correct. So there is, uh, I should tell you that there is sort of a hidden mode. You have to read the docs for this. This is somewhere here, I think it's when you select male or female that you can type something else. That gives you access to like a, a very, very rudimentary machine code monitor. It gives you memory peak ability. So you can you can select the location and, and it will show a number of addresses. I'm sure that was done for debugging when they run the game and it's still in there if you want to use it. Uh, so that was correct. And now it uh, randomizes uh, a number of parameters for my guy. So I'm 19 strong and I had 33 silvers. And we are now about to join the dungeon. All right. Uh... I don't, it's, it's still loading. It's still loading, is it? Okay, so let's let's select T for, so this is the teleport menu. Uh, here you have, you use X and Y uh, if you want to move to uh, like an arbitrary location and then map you select the level. So this is level zero, and the deeper you go into the dungeon, the higher the number. Um, and, and of course, we did provide a map in the PDF guide. So if you would like to know where you're teleporting yourself, that is an excellent guide for that. Space for next time, a next page. So this is sort of the arbitrary teleportation. Here you have a number of sort of fixed locations. So if you want to go to one of those locations, then just select that. And, and I should also say that this teleports you to the square just behind, uh, so just before going to that place. So you need to take one step forward when you're here. And the reason for doing it is this, um, if you're teleporting yourself to one place and then you take a step forward, that means that the previous place you've been to is the place where we teleported you to. But if we teleport you directly into the location, the last, the, the previous location would be something where you were now, which doesn't really make sense. So uh, this is why this is. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> my favorite location here is the Riddler. Uh, teleport menu four, uh, item four is the Riddler because the Riddler is the handle of one of the guys in active. So. Uh, hence of active. That's sort of an internal joke. Uh, yeah, and I can select any of them. Chapel. And now we are just outside of the chapel. I should remember how to move forward. <laughs> I don't remember how to move forward. Okay. Uh, so that was that. Uh, the other that was the teleport menu, and that gives you uh, a number of sort of uh, boosters here. Set yourself to nine hundred ninety nine hit points. That's reasonably handy. Sober, hydrate, and feel energy. Uh, you can run out of energy if you drink too much. You can actually become really drunk, and uh, and you can become thirsty if you don't drink often enough. Uh, if you start slaying 
uh, like beggars and stuff, uh, you are seen as really bad and uh, and eventually that will bite you in the ass. So here you have the opportunity to abolish all sins and turn good. Yeah, crystals, torch, compass and timepiece, they are three really handy items. So that's also one of the good things to pick that up and, and use that. So even if you don't want to use any of the other trainers, you want to really play this game, uh, you might want to make it a little bit easier by having a torch, a compass and a timepiece just to ensure that you have those. Uh, um, and, and also all the items, they, they have a weight. So if you have too much with you, uh, you are going to walk really, really slowly. But uh, here in, in option six, you have the, the opportunity to make the inventory light. So basically removing all the weight from all the items you're carrying. And here, here you find the <laughs> the people uh, who contributed to this. They were all awarded uh, a position of a special weapon that we created for them. So, my sword, pitcher's axe, thrasher's shield, TNG's trident, Jason's space gun, and uh, and then a golden horn because they were. That's the only five. We didn't have any person to allocate uh, item number six to. Super, yeah, yeah, super. A number of other items that might be handy for you to have. Especially here is the mirror shield, which you need in order to complete the game. So if you miss to pick that one up, you are in deep trouble and you will never be able to complete the game. Tactical nuke. Uh, so these are, are magics. Uh, some of them are rather difficult to obtain. So this is a quick way to ensure that you get them. Uh, and yeah, yeah, so you know, and and so you can just run around and bash and do whatever you want, but uh, but there is also an overarching uh mission to do here, and that is sort of split into a number of quests. So you can you can fulfill the quest and you can also fulfill the general um. Yeah, the general task, of course. Uh, so the silver key, the reforged ring, purple cape, stuff, piece, bloodstone and portal access card. They are all items you need in order to complete uh, separate quests. Yeah, and now we're done. Now I'm probably getting attacked. Oh, we we're just outside again. All right, so I'm I'm moving back to the to this so uh that was the example of alternate reality made into sort of perfection and uh, and i hope you me describing it gives you sort of an overview that uh, a lot of <laughs> effort went into analyzing every aspect of the game that was relevant for making especially the in-game trainers and and I would find it difficult to accept if somebody did uh, something more thorough with this game. It, it's basically impossible. Okay, now I'm being attacked. Uh, I'm just quitting the game here in the background. So that was Alternate Reality The Dungeon. We also did a version of Alternate Reality The City. That was a lot easier because it had like fewer aspects to it. Uh, that's also a really good version. We do have basically the same sort of setup for uh, for teleportation inside the game and also an in-game trainer so you can easily win your fights and all of that. But uh, that's for you to explore yourself. Alternate reality, the dungeon is sort of the better of the two. We don't have any t-shirts for the city and we also don't have a 50 page PDF for, for that one. Yeah. If you like this and if you like the game, do buy that t-shirt because it's a really neat t-shirt as well. Okay, let's let's go into one of the more, uh, probably the best game ever done on the C64. If you would have 1000 people voting for the best game on the C64, I, I guess uh, a large portion of those would vote for Last Ninja 3. So it has to be considered one of the best games on the platform. Um, and let's go back to this again and, uh, let's do, uh, where are we? Oh yeah, yeah we are here. So last Ninja three, um, I need to turn off the 
voice stick there. Okay. So our version of Lost Ninja 3, first of all, this was done together with Gollum. And Gollum was the guy that was the main cracker of Fairlight when I joined. Uh, he did all the complex stuff. He's a truly brilliant guy. He coded Rubicon and No Mercy, and he's now a math professor. So, I mean, it's quite clear that he has the brain capacity to do anything that's sort of logic related. Um, and uh, he had been sort of passive for a number of, of years when this happened, uh, but he lived really near me, so uh, we met every now and then, and uh, and uh, so we hooked up to do this. It took us two evenings, and, and he taught me a few of his special tricks, and one of them was in particularly useful in this case, uh, because this is the, the, the trick that made us provide the absolutely best version uh, of the game. So I, I think the game consists of four files, uh, sorry, four levels. Uh, it could be five, but uh, so what we did was that we managed to squeeze all those levels onto the backside. So there is sort of an intro and all of that that sits on the first side, and then you swap the disk or flip it over and press space. And then it starts loading the files from the second side. Nobody else was able to do anything near that. They needed to have a few of the levels on the second side, but they needed to have levels also on the first side because nobody was able to, to squeeze all the levels down to just sitting on one side. And how did we do that? Yeah, the trick is, is uh, and I, I will just start uh lost ninja here for for you to see so the trick is that there are segments in all levels that are the same they sit in the same place and they are absolutely the same um, for instance i would imagine the animation of the main sprite that would be the same in all the levels because it looks the same in all the levels so if you have a program that analyze all the levels and and sort of compare them and find places that are the same in all the levels that means you can take those out patch that area with zero and um, and then save it out and then when you level crunch that file is going to be a lot smaller than it was with the original data in it the only thing you need to do when you load the level is load the level with the with the, now the big areas of zeros within it and then just load in the uh, the file with all the patches. So that will be a file that consists of multiple subfiles, but you just keep loading, keep loading, keep loading, keep loading until the file is done. And then you have patched up all the areas with zero with the commonalities from that commonalities file that means that you only represent the data once where it's redundantly re uh, repeated four times so that makes you so <laughs> so you represent that data with one third of the data uh, and that was sufficient for us to squeeze all the files into the second part uh, the second side of the disk so inside, insert the side two and press run stop. Uh, okay, yeah. Where is Lost Ninja 3? Oh, yeah, here it is. Here is the second. And run stop. Which one is this? Okay, so uh, Golem also did the trainer menu. So we have now ensured that you pressed and, and entered page uh, side two. And I guess at this point, we have a lot of, of room for uh, for all sorts of things because it's just when you start uh, load the levels that everything starts to be really squeezed. But unlimited lives and unlimited power and go to end sequence. But uh, let's see here how many levels. Four, five. Okay, so there is actually five levels. Uh, let's pay, let's pick that one. And uh, I'm not really going. I'm not really sure that it will be visible when it loads one and then sort of stops and then starts loading the next let's see how if you can see that ah uh, no i i guess it 
it won't be possible to see it. Um, and please mind, there is no speed loader in this one. It's just a, a normal get byte, I would imagine. I, I don't remember that we had any fast loader in this one. Uh, it's just a normal loader and decrunching with sort of standard uh, decrunch um, without any speed loader component to it. Um, yeah, we can do warp mod because it will not be visible. It takes forever to load again without the speed loader, which is a bit of a shame. If I did this today, there would probably be a speed loader. But I will use the uh, the technique to kind of extract the commonalities. I do have a tool for this uh, now on the PC, which is one of the few internal tools that we still have. Right. So that's how we did last Ninja 3 better than anybody else. So that was everything I wanted to go through today. I've been showing you six different games that are where the Fairlight version sort of stood out, where we went the extra mile to make our version better, by far better than everybody else's version. I know other groups call that Jewel or whatever. Uh, the intention of a Fairlight crack is that it's always superior to everybody else's version. So we didn't, we don't need to call them dual. They are the Fairlight version, and that should be good enough to compare with the best versions out there, or potentially even be a lot better than those. That's our humble opinion of our own work. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, well, uh, if you watched everything uh, so far, you have also learned a very special trick in, uh, in one of the games, and I'm not going to point that out. If you're listening to this and haven't picked that up, do watch it again and see if you can pick up that special trick that we used with one of the games that made it really special. It's probably a trick that you can use yourself if you're also doing multi-level cracks on the C64. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you in an episode in the very near future. Bye bye.